All right, guys, I'm here with Joel Turner, and this is going to be a follow-up video to the one that we did on Target Panic. And today we're going to go through Joel's bow because anybody that's ever actually looked at it up close <laughs> and looked at how he shoots is going to have some questions, so stick around. All right, Joel, what in the world have you got going on here? Why? Just why? Right. So I shoot with my thumb. That's the big why instead of my fingers. What, when you shoot with your thumb, it gives me two and a half inches more draw length than with my fingers, and which allows me to get into much better alignment. But one of the, the side effects of it is when you shoot your thumb, obviously it opens this way where your fingers would open this way. So to match the paradox of the arrow, you'd want to shoot with the arrow on the other side of the bow, right? But an added benefit to that even more is that the sight picture is just phenomenal, right? So shooting with a thumb was, you know, decades ago was for horse archery where, you know, the archer would be riding a horse, they had a quiver, so they're able to get their arrow out and they would load it from this side instead of having to come over the top. So they'd load it from this side. I've got my quiver in the way, obviously. So they would load it, they could grab onto the arrow and then they could push the arrow forward and load it like this, right, which was much quicker. And then when you put your thumb around the string and then you held it on there with your finger. So the pressure from your index finger is what held it on there when they're riding their horse. So the arrow doesn't bounce, right? If you had it on the other side, obviously the arrow would be bouncing all over the place. So that's where thumb archery really started was in mounted horse archery. But we've taken it to a modern, a modern bow system, right? So it gives me two and a half inches more draw length and then the sight picture is very unique because most bare bow archers are trying to see, they're trying to get their eye to 12 o'clock directly over the shaft so that they can use the arrow, whether they see the arrow or not, however they aim, so they can use the arrow for left and right alignment. Well, I see it a little bit differently because their eye is at 12 o'clock, my eye is actually at 10 o'clock. So if I was looking at the back of this shaft, where normally, so you got the back of the shaft, so normally the eyeball is 12 o'clock, mine is at 10 o'clock. So be that as it may, I can see down the 10 o'clock position of the arrow, so I can actually see the pitch. I can see the pitch from the side. So judging distance is not that big of a deal to me because I can really see the trajectory path of the arrow. And having the arrow on the other side of the bow allows me to still put the point directly underneath the spot. So it's like a double axis sight picture. It's very unique. It's very effective in hunting because I don't have to I don't have to judge range as much. I can really see the actual pitch of the arrow whereas most again most bare bow archers are trying to look at it as a ramp, right? And they're only able to see that one axis where I can see it from the side, which is really cool. Yeah. So So I don't when I'm uh, when I'm aiming my arrow, I don't see the pitch at all because my eye is directly above that arrow all i see basically is a a very short line mm -hmm. you know at the, the perspective of that arrow and i'm using the tip right and so i'm relying on those gaps right or the, the gaps that have been imprinted on my mind mm -hmm. you know through repetition and shooting right but you're actually using the pitch of the I, arrow I, i'm looking at the ramp from the side yeah Right, so I can so see you can see that relative to the, absolutely. You can target. really see it relative to the target, and you can still put it directly underneath the target for left and right. So you get the best of both worlds. It's really a phenomenal sight picture. See, that's something. The left and right thing is something that you have tried to describe to me, and I yet I cannot wrap my mind around how that works. Because if the arrow is not directly under your eye, and mm -hmm. you put the tip on there, so. Let, let me rephrase that. If okay. the arrow knock, and we'll take it to extremes. Right. If the arrow knock is over here. Mm -hmm. The tip is on uh, the target. Mm -hmm. Well, the arrow shaft is going across right. the vision, which is going straight toward the target. Mm -hmm. It seems to me like the arrow would go this way, right. but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's because the arrow, you know, you're not talking, it's not that extreme, right? It's just outside your pupil. It's just not in line with your pupil. It's just outside of it. So as long as the arrow comes to the other side of the bow, all this is really is a bow that's cut far enough past center that the arrow's on the other side, right? That's really all it is. So with the paradox of the arrow and such, just like if you were to line your self bow up, it's not cut to center. If you were, 
you're still looking at it slightly. You have to do things to your bow to manipulate maybe a little bit of a cant to get it directly underneath, but it's still, you're still looking at it. It's still pointed off to one side, so you're dealing with arrow spine and all kinds of things to bring it back into the middle somewhat. So the arrow spine and everything works the same way with this, right? I've just, I've matched the paradox, so it'd be like a left-handed shooter shooting with their fingers. And you're, sh you're shooting with even, even this way, you're shooting with a, just a slight cant. Right. Mm -hmm. And the arrow is held on by the pressure of that index finger. So if I was to obviously no pressure on it and I can't my bow, sure, it's going to fall off of there. But if I have the pressure of that finger on there, so I've got my thumb underneath there and then my finger goes over underneath my thumb and this pressure right here, right, it holds it on there however, however you want it. Hence why they did it for the mounted archery. So it's really cool. Once I started shooting this way, I just have no intention of going back to shooting with my fingers. Because another thing is you draw it back two and a half inches farther, so the string comes way back here, and you would think they would just rip your face off, right? Because you see all the bare bow archers today that have the tape on their nose, all that stuff. Well, my thumb opens this way, so the string goes around my head. I mean, I could literally draw back and rest my face on the shaft of the arrow and not hit myself. So there's all kinds of, and just the anchor points money, it's, it's really good, man. You gotta try it. So what, uh, what pushed you to start trying this? Just, well, first I got sick of hitting my face because if you're, if you're shooting with your fingers and you're really digging into that anchor point, you're gonna hit your face, especially when you shoot with control because now you don't have that pre-ignition movement of moving your head out of the way. So people that shoot with their fingers when they gain ultimate control of their shot, they start hitting themselves because now the pre-ignition movement of getting the head out of the way doesn't exist anymore. So now they start hitting themselves. So they go to tape or whatever, which is, which is fine. I didn't want to go that route and I've just, I've studied archery in general for so long. There's a whole other world of Eastern cultures, Asian cultures that started this whole game and it's a whole different world. I mean, they all shoot very short bow, you know, horse bows, right? They're short, they're not cut to center. They require katra, which is the twisting of the wrist at, at release. It's just, it's so interesting to me. I thought, I wanna try it. So I took a modern, a modern left-handed bow and just started shooting that way. And once I saw that sight picture and really figured out what I was looking at, I'm like, oh, this is good. This is really good. So I find myself, I dabble in all kinds of archery, but I always find myself coming back to this. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I have tried to shoot. I've never tried to shoot a left-handed bow with a thumb ring. I've mm -hmm. tried to shoot with a thumb ring on my bows that I make, and mm -hmm. it's it's bad. Yeah, it'd be very difficult. It's Being really not bad. cut to center, be yeah. very difficult that way. Yeah, yeah, you'd really have to can it to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, you gotta try it. I mean, you make bows, make your left-handed one, buddy. I might, I might have to try that. Absolutely. All right, uh, where can folks, if they want to learn more about this or your shooting courses or anything like that, where can folks get in touch with you? Yeah, shotiq.com is my website. I've got online courses on there. I've got several YouTube videos out there. My channel is shotiq on thumb shooting techniques, and I've got how to build gloves for your thumb shooting, uh, all kinds of stuff's out there. So yeah, shotiq.com. All right. Thanks, buddy.